There are several different ways that you can package and box up your order for shipment. Lots of different ways and it's going to have it, and it's going to depend on lots of different variables. For example, how many candles are you selling? What type of candles are you going to be packaging and delivering? Are you including melts? Is there an even number? What boxes do you have on hand? There's a lot of different factors that can go into what type of method you need or what type of process you need in order to securely package your, uh, your order for delivery. Today, we're going to go over one that I call the tight bubble double box method. This method is a good universal method that used for almost most deliveries. I don't know. I don't think that's some official method name. It's just what I've always called it. So that is the topic for today's video. All right, guys, my name is Wade Thomas. I am the owner of Black Tie Bar and Candle Company. For all my current subscribers, welcome back as always. So if you are new here, this channel is dedicated entirely to candle making, melt making, and behind the scenes business side of things as well. So if any of that interests you, I would encourage you to subscribe, give this video a like, and don't forget to hit the bell notification so you are alerted whenever I post new videos. With all that out of the way, I appreciate you all for being here. Let's go ahead and get started. For this particular method, you're going to need two sizes of boxes. Now, it's, what size depends on how many candles and the size of your candles. But for this particular order, we're going to be using two, two sizes of boxes. One needs to be bigger than the other. The idea is you're going to package everything in the smaller box, make sure it fits and it's snug and protected, and then you're going to double box that box inside of another box that is then surrounded by either packing peanuts or packing paper. And so for this order today, we're going to be packaging nine of my Woodweck tumbler candles, nine and a half, nine and a half ounce tumbler candles. There's one of them there. There's one of them there. It's probably reversed in the uh, in the camera, but uh, they're just nine of my Woodweck tumblers. Um, and there's a few different options here. This is an order for nine of them, um, and they ordered some of the my winter ones as well. Anyways. So this particular order is kind of difficult to package for a number of reasons. One, the size of the candle and the quantity of the candles, these are fragile, they need to be protected very well. And also there's, a, there's an odd number. So this order was for nine of these candles. Well, nine is an odd number, which means it's not necessarily gonna fit together perfectly. There's gonna be something kind of random or off, typically when you're packaging these. Now again, there's ways to make that not so not the case. Um, but a lot of times you're kind of, you know, putting two together or four together, something like that. In this case, we're just going to get creative and see how we go. There's no really formula to package these correctly. There are, believe it or not, there are applications you can use, uh, but they're very costly. They can kind of take your weight and the size of all your items and the size of boxes you have and show you geometrically the best way to package everything together. But that's even really tough to use because it doesn't necessarily take into consideration packing materials like bubble wrap, peanuts, things like that. So anyways, those are the items that we're going to be packaging today for shipment. Um, other than your candles, obviously, the other things you're going to need is some uh, scotch tape or masking tape. Uh, your packing tape, of course, a couple boxes, as I talked about, a scale and bubble wrap. That's really all you need in order to do this. So. Uh, enough explaining, let's get to the demonstration. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is, is work with the inner box. Um, this is gonna be the box that the items are actually put directly into. And so this is a 10 by 10 size box, which is big enough to hold the nine tumblers that I will be securing. Now to spare you the, uh, the long delay of actually taping these, and I'm pretty deliberate with tape, I really wanna make sure that the boxes are nice and secured and can make it in transit. So um, I just sped that up a little bit, but once the bottom is taped, the next thing to do is start actually um, wrapping each item. Now you could use all sorts of different bubble wrap. This is stuff that I had already had plenty of. And so I fold it over. It's a, it's a one foot square that I fold over and just uh, wrap them up and just use some regular scotch tape to secure the bubble wrap. Now this is step one that I do. Now depending on the type of bubble wrap, if you've got really, really good, dense, expensive, um, high quality bubble wrap, then this is really the only step you would need to do here. This is just kind of your average run of the mill bubble wrap. And so I like to take an extra precaution, which you'll see in the next stop, in the next step. Also, because I fold it over and these jars um, don't quite get covered once I fold it on the top and bottom, you'll see in the next step that I use some of that other packing paper as well. But again, the first step is just to double this up and wrap each jar nice and tight and then just secure it in. 
So we'll speed the rest of this up here in a sec so you don't have to see me wrap each one of these, but this is the first step I do with all my orders is individually wrap all the items. Now, if this is more of a luxury order or someone paid for gift boxing or anything like that, then you can definitely put these in their own boxes. And I do that fairly frequently as well. Um, however, in some of these larger orders, uh, customers don't really want to do that. They just, they're just looking for the candles. And so I will just make sure they're all packaged nice and securely and that is sufficient for them. It's also cheaper for both of us. So you can see they're all individually wrapped. And then this next step is optional. Now I do this for a couple of reasons. One, it's a little easier to pack and handle without kind of messing with the candle inside of the bubble wrap if you wrap them in something else on the outside as well, which is what I'm doing here. The other thing is um, it also protects the top and bottom a little bit more. So this is a little wider than the bubble wrap. Um, and so I can get a little extra cushion for starters uh, around the outside, but also on the top and bottom. And uh, especially once you fold it over, it just kind of um, contains and encapsulates the entire candle fully um, all the way around. So once again, we'll speed up the video here so you don't have to watch all of these, but this is the step two that I do as well. Now, if you're doing a separate box for each one of these candles, you don't have to do this step um, unless you just want to. It, how you package and set up and wrap your, your candles is completely up to you. Every one of us is gonna do this differently. I'm just showing you basically that I want to individually wrap up and protect each candle first. That is the first step of this, of this process is to individually protect each item. Now we're gonna start filling that first box, the 10 by 10 box with some packing peanuts. You wanna make sure there's enough in the bottom uh, because I, you know, typically you wanna protect all sides uniformly uh, around, but the bottom is where your candles are gonna be first sitting up again. So I definitely wanna make sure there's enough packing peanuts there to make sure they don't wiggle or hit real hard on the bottom if the box is dropped. And uh, I do the same principle around all edges because you never know what size they're gonna drop. But this box is gonna be going in another box. So it's less important at this point. The, the idea with this box is to make sure everything is tight and not moving around. And so I'm going to keep adding packet peanuts and I'm going to really tuck all those peanuts in every crevice as I can, make sure that all the sides um, are compacted. And the whole goal here in this step, which is step two, the inner box, is just to make sure the items aren't moving around. You can see I placed them all uh, one layer so they're not moving and then we're gonna add some more packing peanuts in between the second set of candles. And once again, the idea is just to keep these from moving around too much. And you can see, I, I have to ad lib a little bit here. Sometimes it's just experimenting. I realized that wasn't gonna work. It's better this direction, so I turned it around. And again, I, I try to space it so it's even on both sides. Fill the rest in with packing peanuts. And lastly, I know I'm sounding repetitive here, but the goal of this step with this inner box is just simply to make sure that these are packed very tightly. This is the stage where you're really just making sure these items are not gonna move around in this first box. If, if, if this step isn't right, then it doesn't matter what you do on the next step. So make sure that this, uh, this part of the process is done correctly and those are really nicely secured. Now I'm gonna close the box up and we're going to tape it closed. And again, I am pretty deliberate with tape. Um, now again, with the inner box, the idea is just to make sure it doesn't open uh, and the candles don't go anywhere. But uh, I'll use even more tape on the outer box. And that is what I'm working on here. This outer box, as I described, um, as I'll describe in a little bit more here in the conclusion, is larger than the other box, obviously. You wanna make sure the other box can fit inside of this box and it's got room for packing paper or peanuts around the outside. So once again, this is the outer box. This is a heavy order. I really, really layer this tape up and make sure it's not going anywhere. Um, the better quality tape you can use, packing tape, the better. I'm using moderate uh, quality tape at this point. I ran out of my good stuff. So I, I added a little bit extra to make sure. Then you're going to fill with some packing peanuts, set the box in, and then you can see uh, that a larger size box would be ideal, but I'll touch on this in a minute why I didn't use a slightly larger one, but this does work. The idea is just to be big enough where you can get packing peanuts or paper around the inner box, and so there's some separation and a gap between the two boxes. Then you fill that gap with some extra cushion. This is obviously the double box part of this method. So you secure each item individually, You've tightly compacted all of them into an inner box, and then you've surrounded that inner box 
with more packing peanuts and cushion, and then finally inside that outer box. Then you're going to make sure it should be tough to close. Like that's the idea. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be a lot of wiggle room. It should be sort of tough to make sure it all uh, holds together nicely and then gets taped. And that's just a little tip right there. When you're closing these boxes, it's a little difficult by yourself. So start with just a little few strips of tape on each edge. That will hold it for you while you go back and then securely tape the rest of the box. So this is the final step, obviously. You're just uh, securing that outer box and taping it nice and good. Again, I'm using a lot of tape here. I do not want this busting open in shipment or transit to customers. So, uh, and you notice there, I just mentioned a uh, 12 pound box for only $11. I'll touch on this a little bit more here in a minute as well. Last step is to apply that shipping label. This is UPS ground and I apply it uh, right on the top there. And these particular labels don't need any other tape over the top. Well, all right guys, that's, that's it. That's all there is to it. The uh, tight bubble double box method really is just about is getting some bubble wrap and making sure that each specific item is nice and protected and then tightly packing everything together first. Now you can use packing paper, you can use cardboard inserts, you can use bubble wrap, peanuts, anything you can to really tighten everything together once each individual item is wrapped. Then you pack that all into the one box as tight as you can, surround it with as much cushion as you can, and then of course the double box part of that is then inserting that box into a larger box. Now, the, the trick with the larger box is ideally you want at least an inch or so uh, difference between the two box sizes. Uh, at least as far as all the way around. So if really, if you have an inch on both sides, you're talking about a two inch difference. And when, that is why I had a 10 by 10 box put into a 12 by 12 box. If you can, I would go even larger than that. It allows you to get more peanuts and packing materials around the inner box. But I didn't have, I'm actually out of any sizes larger than that. And I couldn't quite fit nine of those Woodwick tumblers in a smaller box than the 10 by 10. And so I just did what I could to make it work. That's why you saw me tucking and pack, packing a little bit more than I normally would just to make sure everything was really nice and snug and protected. And that's really all there is to the uh, to that, that method. You're really kind of doing three things to make sure your products arrive safely. You're packing each unique item safely, then you're packing all those together in an inner box nicely, and then you're lastly encapsulating that into one more final outer box that also has additional packing. So I've never, ever, ever had a candle arrive broken or in otherwise bad shape. So I love this method, it works really well. It can be a little cumbersome messing with the packing peanuts, you know, and making sure all the corners and crevices and uh, are all filled, but uh, it works really, really, really well, especially for the majority of you candle makers that are doing this from home or a small workspace. If you're in a warehouse or some kind of industrial setting, you might have packing material uh, machinery or something like that that can really help you in so many other ways. Again, this is just one way that really works well for small businesses or simply people at home just uh, doing something on the side as an extra source of income. So one last tip before I let you go, and that is the size of the, uh, the outside box. Many of you probably already know this, but if you stay under the 12 by 12 size, you're going to save more on shipping most of the time. Um, and so I very rarely use flat rate box shipping. Um, it would be, it's kind of unusual circumstances for me to do that. Uh, typically it would be a lot of really heavy, small items going into one box and traveling a really far distance. That's kind of the exception. For example, I have a customer in Alaska that buys many, many candles from me at once all the time. And so I can just put them all in one flat rate shipping box. And, uh, and that's the most effective way for us, for both of us. But most of the time I package in my own boxes. And if you keep things under 12 inches or 12 inch size and smaller, as far as the box size goes, you're gonna save money. Um, as I showed you in the video, this box is filled with nine tumblers, nine candles. It's gonna last the customer a long time. And the entire weight of this was you know, 13 pounds. And uh, the entire cost of the shipping is only 11 bucks, $11. So that last tip, in regards to shipping and saving some money for your customers is encourage multiple product orders. It is not cost effective to buy one or two candles. It just isn't. Same thing with melts most of the time. If you can kind of market on your website or to your customers that it's more cost effective to buy four or more candles at a time, the cost of shipping per item is very, very low. They basically pay just over a dollar per candle in shipping for this. That's crazy. A dollar or something per shipping for these candles, uh, which are nicely packed, tight and cushioned, 
and, uh, and are gonna make it to your customer safely. That is a heck of a deal. So always try to push that if you can to your customers. Oh, and I lied, one more little thing. You notice that I did do the double box and box method. That is gonna increase your cost of packing just a little bit because you're using two boxes instead of ones. Work that into your shipping cost. Unless you're offering free shipping, which I did in this case, for certain orders on my website, $75 an order I, and over, I do free shipping on everything. So if you're not, you're doing real-time price, uh, real-time shipping rates and things like that. Uh, most e-commerce sites will allow you to build in um, additional shipping and packing or package and handling costs. So just get an idea of what your boxes and your packing materials might cost you. Um, most of us candle makers get our supplies full of packing peanuts and packing paper. And so we don't have to spend a lot of money buying additional uh, packing materials, but the boxes for sure. So if you're spending a buck on packing materials per order, then increase your shipping by that flat rate of a dollar per order. Um, and you know, that's one way to, to build in the cost of shipping. Again, you don't have to do that. That's just if you're charging customers for shipping, then make sure you're accounting for some of those packing materials. Um, if not, then you should do what you can to, to keep the, your own cost uh, minimal. But uh, that's really all the tips I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Once again, there are a lot of different ways to pack orders and ship them out. Um, this particular one's going out UPS, but I do use UPS and I use USPS. Um, it just kind of depends on the rates and where it's going. The most important part is there are just several ways to pack, and I'm going to show other methods of packing orders um, in, in future videos, but this is one I probably use the most commonly. It just, it's so universal and it works with so many different size orders in different situations. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something new. And if not, maybe reinforce what you're doing already. I appreciate you all for being here and we'll see you next time. Thanks.